Well, thanks so much for joining us again for another Monday Family Devotional. Uh, this time, I've got Scott Finch with us, and he is one of our life group directors. He is, uh, leads our re-engage program with he and his wife, Sherilyn, and uh, just absolutely loves Jesus Christ, and he loves everybody at this church, and he will do anything he can <laughs> to just get in front of somebody and just love on them and share the love of Christ with them. So I'm going to let Scott kind of share a little bit about himself. Yeah, so uh, Sherilyn and I have been married for about six and a half years now, and uh, leadership of the church uh, just tapped us on the shoulders, and that's how Reengage kind of started. And uh, but personally, uh, we, we uh, I got three boys, and and uh, those three boys, and then Sherilyn's uh, three. We've got six between us, and so uh, we we are actually uh, currently have eight grandbabies. And wow. a, a ninth one that's due, you know, any minute, actually. Uh, so we're sitting on ready yeah. with it. But so many things have changed, right? And um, uh, for the babies that were born uh, like three, four years ago, we were able to go into the hospital, sit and wait and bring them food and all that sort of stuff. But it's all that's changed now. So uh, for so for this one, uh, Sherilyn has, her name is Cher Bear. So uh, her grandmother named Cher Bear. So Cher Bear has, has created a sign. We saw this on the news. She created a sign that they can look down from their hospital room and just say, hey, welcome, Charlie. Mm. Charlie's the mm. baby, baby boy's name is, uh, that we're expecting here. And, uh, and then uh, we just love you guys. And so that's what we're going to be doing as soon as we get the call. Yeah. Um, Since you won't here. be able to go in the hospital probably. That's so right. More than likely. That's right. Man, you guys, so, I mean... <clears throat> That's how you operate. You guys find a way, no matter what happened, no matter what circumstances, you just are very intentional. I'd say that in regards to relationships, and that's family, that's, mm -hmm. you know, the people that you're over in life group, the people that God has entrusted into your care, like you're just very intentional about being in their life. And I know this time right now is killing you guys because of all the things, you know, equal opportunity grandparents, you know, you've right. been able to do this one for these, so you always want to be able to do those same things. So how has this been just kind of weighing on you guys a little differently? You know, how has this been complicated because the situation just loving on your family and, mm -hmm. and being there with them. I know you even said to an extent you've tried to, which is way outside your comfort zone, shelter yourself, you know, right. just from others as well. So how, is, how has that been? Yeah, you? well, I mean, my personality is an, as an extrovert, right? And so when I'm coming and meeting somebody or seeing even you today, we, 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 we were like, hey, uh, no, yeah, no right. <laughs> do, we, do, we, do we get in there, right? And, and do that or do we keep our distance? One of, the, one of the things we've really tried to do is try to protect ourselves in order that when we do get the call, we are safe uh, and, and clean, I guess, for yeah. lack of a better term, uh, to, to be able to even see or be near them. You know, uh, and, but but we're not the only ones, right? There are so many people that are that are doing the same thing, whether it's the social, through social distancing or staying at home. And one of the things that one of the questions Cheryl and I were, have been walking through is, what's the much, what's the prudent thing to do? What's the wise thing to do? And that's what we want to follow. Mm -hmm. And so in in doing that, uh, again, being an extrovert, I, I'm I'm like all in. And uh, so it has, it has been a big adjustment. It's like a lot of folks that are watching, it's been an adjustment uh, to get uh, the fellowship, which mm. is probably what we're gonna be talking about today, today yeah. too, get that fellowship, but through all the, all the things like Zoom or Facebook Live and all that, so. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I think Zoom, I mean, there's so many things that we learned during this time frame. I think that uh, if we could go back and buy stock in Zoom, we would. Yeah. I mean, this thing is, uh, the coronavirus has really kind of just created some new norms in our lives. It's also really reminded us those things that matter. Those things are important. Mm -hmm. It's really taught me several things like uh, TP during a pandemic apparently is like mission critical. So get out there right yes. away. The next time there's even a hint of something, apparently yes. go out and buy TP or you're in trouble, you know. <laughs> um, you know, other things. It's just some of these terms that even come out of the Rona stuff, you know, mm -hmm. just shelter in place and social distancing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't if you would have shared something about social distancing with me about three months ago, I, as an extroverted person, I'd be like, you're, okay, that's for the introverts, you're nuts. I, I can't social distance. I don't know what that means. That just means personal space, and I'm supposed to come up in it and, and give you a hug in that and violate all those, yeah. the, the, those well, parameters. I'm, I'm so so uh, there's a lot of things we learn, but you know, there's a lot of things, too, that, that come to light that you know, we're heavily reminded of. And I think during this time frame, with shelter in place, with not being able to interact with other people, 
you know, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, mm -hmm. um, God wired us for relationships. Right. He wired us for community. Yeah. I mean, my wife is an introvert. I'm an extrovert. So you put these two worlds together and uh, it, it's a challenge for us at times. But even in the midst of that, even my introverted wife even struggles because deep, meaningful relationships mm -hmm. for the introvert or the extrovert, they're missing right now. Yeah. Just getting to go and let somebody know how important they are, seeing somebody face to face. There's just mm -hmm. something about that, that like your spirit just, just kindles, it ignites when you're around somebody that you desire to be around. Yeah. And I, I truly believe that is just what God intended and it's what he meant by whenever he started creating this idea for us. And all throughout the scriptures, 20 times in the New Testament, he talks about this idea of fellowship, mm -hmm. you know? And so he created fellowship for us, but this has really brought to light fellowship, mm -hmm. the, the deep-seated meaning of fellowship, mm -hmm. not just get together for a meal and, and hang out and laugh while important, what it really reminded us is that we need to be in deep relationships, yeah. active, intentional relationships with one another. And that's kind of what this idea in the scripture was. 20 times this idea of koinonia is used. This, this koinonia, this idea of fellowship, mm -hmm. which goes way beyond what we mean. And I just kind of want to read a passage real quick that I think will kind of bring this to light. And then we're kind of going to dig into it and so many other passages. But one of the first passages is 1 John 1, 3. And in 1 John 1, 3, he says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us and fellowship with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, we got this idea of fellowship with the Son, with the Father, with each other. All right, so this idea of, of fellowship with the Father, the Son, um, we were created to be in relationship with Him, but also like how he says this fellowship with us. Yep. And I think we get that. I think we get this idea that, that true fellowship has to have Christ at the center. Mm -hmm. True fellowship means the Spirit is present because true fellowship can really only happen amongst a body of believers. Yeah. And, and so right now, it's hard for the body to gather. It's hard right. for the body to get together. Yeah. And, and so what have you been seeing with your life groups? What are you noticing with them? Yeah, so there are actually a couple of our life groups, uh, the small groups are, are using Zoom. And by utilizing Zoom, there have been uh, probably collectively together more people in our meetings than we're able to come to our small groups. So there have been some benefits in getting together with uh, utilizing Zoom. And you get to hear uh, and, and keep up with what's going on in people's life. I think part of that is that the other scriptures, that like iron sharpens iron, mm. so one mm. man sharpens another. I mean, that has to be done uh, in proximity. Yeah, yeah. Zoom just doesn't get it done. No. no and and we've been really doing it. We've been trying it with our guys. I know right. you've been trying it quite a bit with mm -hmm. your folks. Yeah. And, and it, it, it serves a, a temporary purpose. Right. But it doesn't kindle the same thing like when I finally ran into you outside. It's like, yes. that's Scott, man, just my heart just gets excited. And there's something so different about, you know, we can gather, but something about just proximity, just being in each other's presence. That's exactly there, right. There's something glorifying about that just when yeah. we think about what God does with that. You know? Yeah, so we had a, a, a young couple that, uh, that brought us a meal. Uh, they had uh, touched base with Sherilyn and I'm out working in the yard and they pull up in the driveway. Of course, we kept our social, social distancing, but they brought us a meal and we got a chance to sit out on the back porch where we could, uh, you know, keep distance. But man, what that did, you said it, what it does to your heart. It just lifts your heart up because we're in their presence. We see them mm -hmm. uh, in person and that proximity to one another and then catching up um, really this community, this fellowship, Mm. It's really life on life. And that's best done with being close, mm -hmm. being in the same presence with one another. Yeah. And, and I think that's really what the scripture talks about when multiple times it's used, here's what you do with one another. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Every, so, every time. Yeah. Let me, if you don't mind, let me yeah. just, let me, uh, let me quote uh, a guy that, that wrote a book. His name's Todd Wagner. Mm. And he, uh, he took all the one another's in scripture and he, he just condensed it. And it's in his book, Come and See. And uh, it's on page 149 and 150. So I'm just going to read yeah. this for just a second. But he says, if it is community, biblical community, is where we love one another, care for one another, show forbearance to one another, mm. forgive one another, admonish one another, keep fervent in our love for one another, be hospitable to one another, 
empty our gifts in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Greet one another. Be of the same mind toward one another. Be kind to one another. Speak to, another, to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual mm. songs. Mm. It is where we build, we comfort, we pray for, we live in peace with, we seek after that which is good for one another. We clothe ourselves in humility toward one another. We stimulate one another to love and good deeds. We mm. confess our sins to one another. We live in peace with one another. We give, uh, we give preference to one another. We honor and encourage one another day after day, lest any of us should become hardened by, de mm. by de the deceitfulness of sin. And when Christ was, was asked, hey, what's the most important mm. commandments? He said, love the Lord your God mm. with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor mm. as you love yourself. How is that done in distance, in isolation? Yeah. Yeah. It can't be, right? Yeah. But, what, but the list that he just went through that I read, if, if we could say, hey, there's a group that does that, yeah. Wouldn't you go, I want to be a part of that? Yeah. And I think that's what yeah. community offers. And there's such a remarkable difference in community and biblical community. Mm -hmm. I really know that there's such a remarkable difference in that because, you know, it's one of the things like we can get some sense of community around people. We, you know, a lot of us, our kids are involved in sports and mm -hmm. things, and you've got a community of people around you in that, but you're like-minded for your kids for, right. for sports, or, right. you know, you're like-minded in, in some of these different things, and, and you meet up, but there's something extraordinarily different and soul-satisfying mm -hmm. about being in biblical community. And it's one of the things we've been mentioning around here all the time, because, you know, we keep saying, you know, we keep putting content out just to help engage our people, to yeah. engage the scriptures, and just kind of keep moving forward with the Lord in this. But, you know, our conversation around here is even you can find great content anywhere. Right. You know, you can go find, you know, at the click of your, your fingers, you know, at the click of a button, you can find a great podcast. You can find a great message on a topic that you're specifically looking for at any given moment. That's probably way better than anything that I could produce. But in the midst of that, the one thing that we cannot get, the one thing we can't replicate mm -hmm. is biblical community. Yeah. It's something yeah. that... Uh, that's one of the, the joys of being able to come together, yeah. be in each other's presence right. and get those one another's. And, and, I, and I love that, you know, that you read all those one another's because that's really what fellowship is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were to take all those one another's, put them together, that is the essence of what the scriptures meant with what God intended by fellowship. Yeah. He's saying it is the interaction between individuals with Christ at the center mm -hmm in the strength and presence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to do these things for one another. It's, it makes me think of, you know, you know, first Peter, you know, when we were talking about that, it made me think of first Peter four, um, starting in first Peter four, eight. And so it even just made me think of that passage. Cause if you think about that, it's exactly what fellowship was intended for. First Peter four, eight says above all, love each other deeply mm -hmm. because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace yeah. in its various forms. Yeah. We interact with each other to administer God's grace to each yep. other. Yep. You can't do that from a distance. Yep. You can't you know, do what really this idea of fellowship. It, it really comes in many different formats and regards. But when you look at across the board, you look at it and it's interacting with each other. And part of the word for, for this idea of fellowship, I, also there's a, this, this use with uh, koinonia that means sharing each other's sufferings, mm -hmm. enduring each other's burdens. You don't do that from a distance. Right. It also means this idea of just being generous to one another, like this idea of hospitality, just generously just loving on each other and pouring into each other. And you talked about the aspect of sharpening our accountability. Yeah. There's something a whole lot different between you and I meeting and discussing on, mm -hmm. a, on an issue versus you know, digitally. It's just not the same. Yep. No, you're exactly right. And I think the, the difference between just community and the biblical community is huge. Yeah. Because uh, from a biblical community standpoint, we don't give you our opinions or what we think about things. Yeah. Matter of fact, there was another young couple that came over. They were struggling in their relationship with one another. And, you know, we're, we're in these close proximities, mm -hmm. right, for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it's getting on each other's nerves or spending way too much time together, whatever that looks like. And uh, one of the things that they were talking about is, hey, what does the Scripture say? Mm. What does the Bible say? And we got a chance to dive into the Scripture. And mm. even diving into the Scriptures and unpacking it for them, I said, hey, one of the things you need to do is you need to take what Sherilyn and I are talking about, you need to compare it to the truth of God's Word. Mm. 
One of the, one of the things that differentiates mm -hmm. biblical community, and I think you you were you were hitting on it, and that is, we drive people back to Christ. That's right. We drive people back to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, another scripture is uh, is really uh, community, biblical community summed up in 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Mm -hmm. And it says this, We urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle mm -hmm. and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with all. Mm -hmm. So whether we're admonishing or whether we're encouraging or whether we're helping or whether we're patient, that's being close, Yeah. right? Yeah. And that's earning the right to speak into you um, and, and that earning the right comes with time and fellowship. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to keep doing that? Because I know these times are just, they're unprecedented, they're different, they're mm -hmm. odd, and uh, it is what it is. You know, right. we, we don't get to gather. You know, we know that we can't wait until that moment. I mean, even yeah. just getting to come together, we, we just, we yearn for that moment. It's going to be so good to be together. Right. And, and so with that, how have, you been, how have you guys been able to do that in your life groups of just showing that aspect of really just caring? Yeah. What does that look like for y'all? Yeah, I think so many uh, people wait for others to take the initiative. Uh, and one of the, I think, healthy uh, guidelines or characteristics of those who are walking in biblical community in a healthy way is you initiate mm. those conversations. You initiate, you check in, whether it's so through so this time, it's through text, for, through phone calls, through the Zoom, yeah. you know, the technology that we're using. But it's that steady, hey, I'm going to check your pulse. Yeah. You know, I've got several groups of men that I get the privilege of being a part of. And so we just check each other's mm -hmm. pulse uh, in this time. Hey, hey, how is your heart? Yeah. You know? And it's easy to hide that digitally. You no, know, you're right. It's easy to hide that, you know, in this in this situation, you know, right. and I, I know you can find ways in any, but there's a difference. You know, if you and I are around each other, mm -hmm. we get a feel that something's off. Right. You know, and so I think that's one of the things. So in this time, it's hard. You just keep checking in. But I think that's one of the things, too, that, is that when God puts somebody on your heart, there's something there. That's right. There's something there. So you just check in and you keep checking in until eventually you got to get them on the phone or whatever it takes, you know. But right. you just kind of keep after them. And I know you do that well. Well, I, I, have, I just appreciate the, the relationships I have with these men and mm -hmm. have built up over the years or through uh, just common, you know, goals and stuff and just say, hey, how, how are things? Let's get real. And I think that's another part of of just being authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, a, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be genuine with one another. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in that genuine transparency, if you will, that we just get real. There's no mask. Yeah. Uh, I know these guys, these men, they're going to love me. And, uh, and they're also going to uh, then body check me. I call it body check up against the, you know, the glass to go, hey, Scott, are you, yeah. whether it's loving Sherilyn Wright or am I handling my finances as well and how's work going? Am mm -hmm. I keeping my heart where it needs to be? Yeah. Or am I getting wrapped up on all the stuff that's around us? Man. You know, what, I, what we found, too, is that fear has gripped so many folks mm -hmm. during this time, whether it's watching the news uh, or whether it's all the, all the different information or misinformation that's going around. And I, I think one of the things that we've learned and we get to continue to walk in is how do we help others then overcome the fear? And that's just reminding mm. them. And you've said it in, in prior studies that, hey, God's still in control. Yeah. And He's the one that loves you. Yeah. He's the one that forms you in your mother's womb, right? And yeah. He's the one that's got your plan mm -hmm. already laid out. Yeah. So do we trust Him? And then for me, uh, is when I am struggling, I need those men to come alongside me and go, Hey, Scott, remember, yeah. this is not your home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a great reminder. You know, yeah. the, everything we're going through is temporary, yeah. you know, in the grand scheme. Yeah. You know, but you hit on it in regards to there, there's something about coming together. There's mm -hmm. something about, you know, when you're with these group of men and you've got trust with mm -hmm. these men, um, there's a vulnerability there, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, you kind of have to work through a little bit and put yourself out there. But I think, you know, one of the concerns for, for you know, us who just pursue people and just care about people during this time is it's easy to isolate during this time. Yes. It's super easy to isolate. And um, like you said, in that moment of isolation, the enemy is going to just keep just keep loudly just letting you know all those things to be afraid of yeah. and what you're 
exposing yourself to yeah. what you're putting in your environment and stuff like that. But that's where it's so great to be in fellowship with people is because somebody gets to balance that. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. You know, you're, you're a couple of thoughts away from being off. You know, and it, you, you start following that track just for a couple of seconds. Your mm -hmm. mind starts to spiral, spiral, and it gets really easy how, how quickly just the flesh can take over and how quickly mm -hmm. we can spiral versus when you're in community with somebody and you start voicing those things, there's at least somebody there to go, hey, yep. you know, yep. I don't think we need to go there. Or like you just said, hey, God's in control. Right. Let's look at what that looks like and how to walk through that together. Yeah, so. and Ryan reminds me that of the truth of his word, mm -hmm. right? And now I've got blind spots, right? I'm looking in yeah. these, these directions and I got blind spots yeah. or something sneaking up on me. And those men mm -hmm. that walk with me and Sherilyn has a group of ladies that walk with her and go, hey, yeah. you're not noticing this, but here's, this is in your blind spot. So yeah. be aware of it. Yeah, I always love that illustration where, you know, you as yourself, since you're kind of in the midst of it, you're the one that's like in the landscape and doing the clipping and stuff on that shrub. And you think that Yopon's looking pretty good. You know, you're getting all laughter. You're feeling pretty good. And your friends are the ones that are across the street heckling you because you just yeah, butchered it. messed that thing yeah, right that's up. Exactly and, and so right. that's where we need those people in our life that kind of have that, that view of us from a distance to go, hey, something's off here, you know, mm -hmm. and they can kind of help us see that even when we can't because we're just, we got our head down or we're going after it, you yeah. know, and and that's one of those benefits yeah. that we get in fellowship, that we get in true, genuine, biblical fellowship where we're being pointed back towards Christ that we don't get anywhere else. Right. Um, right. So for those that haven't found their place, mm -hmm. how would you like to encourage them? Like during this time specifically, how would you like to encourage somebody that just, they just haven't found that place yet? Or mm -hmm. maybe they've been wounded in, mm -hmm. in this idea of community. And so there's a they're tentative or they're just yeah. nervous about it. How would you try to encourage them during this time to really seek out? Because I think this situation just magnifies our need right. for community. Yeah. We need it desperately. No, you're right. I, I, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll quote, I'll, again, I'll quote Todd Wagner on this. And one of the things that he, he, he hits home is this, and it's a it's great question, is so c can you be running after Jesus and not study God's word? Mm. Can you be running after Jesus and not spend time in prayer? And there's a third leg to that stool. Can you be running after Jesus and not be in fellowship with other people? Mm. I think sometimes uh, what we need to be reminded of is this, that God has your best interest at heart. Mm. And He uses other people mm -hmm. to help. Yeah. Yeah. So... Can we humbly serve one another? Can we be a part of a group? Just like the one another's I read, mm -hmm. those groups exist. Yeah. And we're here yeah. to help. Because that's God's best interest yeah. for you. Well, you can't, there's so much in Scripture you can't fulfill without mm -hmm. community, without yeah. genuine fellowship. One of the things I always go back to, I love this passage, it's Hebrews 10. And Hebrews 10 Starting in verse 23, says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. So it starts with God. Let us hold unswervingly to God. Let us mm. just hang on to this hope that we profess. In other words, if we're going to proclaim it, we better hold on to it and be faithful. And then he says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, mm. as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Right on. That's what we need. That's right. I mean, you've got to have that. So we hold on to Jesus Christ. We hold on to the faith that we profess. And if you're going to hold on to a faith and you're going to pro profess this faith, you have to do that in community. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not in line with the scriptures. You can't do this in isolation. Mm -hmm. We weren't wired for isolation. Yeah. Isolation is unhealthy. We know what the enemy does with isolation. We know what a lion does when he isolates a prey. We know what the enemy does when he isolates a believer. Mm -hmm. And he's going to come after him. And so... What we have to understand in this is how can we consider how to, and I love that, I, I love that idea, to spur one another on. I, I just like that word, to, right. to spur each other on. In other words, you know, that's not going to be comfortable. You know, you, you have to be close and to spur somebody means yeah. you got to be close to spur them. <laughs> so you got to be in their life. You got to be in their mess. You got to be in yeah. what's going on to yeah. spur. How can we consider, in other words, I got to know what's going on with you. You yeah. got to know what's going on with me so we can spur each other. Why? To encourage each other for Christ. Yeah. In other words, like you said, that Christ has your best interest at heart. And maybe that best interest is putting somebody close enough yeah. to speak a truth that hurts yeah. or to be there to just pick you up when you don't feel like getting out of bed 
or to be there in the time of suffering, to be there in a time of joy, to be there to hold up a sign, you know, that says, we're here, we love you, welcome to the world, whatever right. it may be. Yeah. He says, every day wake up with that intentionality mm -hmm. to spur them on. Yep. Yeah. So. And, and, and you mentioned it. Uh, some people have been hurt, they've been burned uh, in the past, and they have this resistance. Hey, I don't want to mm -hmm. do that again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I would say, I would encourage those folks, hey, listen, we're not here to hurt. We're not here to damage. We're not here to wound, even though those wounds exist. Yeah. What we're here to do is is consider how to stimulate one another. Yeah. Consider how to spur one another on. And uh, and then there's this other side, too, is, hey, you know what? Those goofballs that are in that group, I don't want to be a part of them, right? <laughs> You know, they're abrasive or whatever the case yeah, may be that yeah. you've used in the past as an excuse. <laughs> they uh, just want to go get coffee and talk. What yeah, are they? Right. I've heard well, that before. Yes, I love doing that. Yes. So. <laughs> and so for me, when, when people deal with conflict in, in small groups, I think instead of what some people do, they run away. They don't mm -hmm. want to be a part of it. They yeah. run away. It's the easiest, you know, take the path of least resistance and I'm going to leave. Instead of what biblical community is mm -hmm. about is learning how to do conflict well? Yeah, because we love one another. Yeah, we're going to get hurt in any good relationship. Yeah, I mean, any worth any relationship worth having, you're going to get hurt. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to disappoint everybody in my life at some point in time or another. Yeah, I hate that, but I'm going to. Yep. Just the same as I'm going to be disappointed by somebody close to me. But the only reason why we're disappointed is because we we're close enough. It, 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 and, and we learn how to deal with conflict yeah. well. We learn how to deal with it healthy. We learn how to love people through disappointment mm -hmm. instead of running away. Yeah. And then once you've done that, do you know what learning how to deal with conflict or learning how to deal with disappointment well is it brings unity. Mm -hmm. That unity grows in mm -hmm. that group instead mm -hmm. of diminishes. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. one of the byproducts. Yeah. Amen. Man, is there anything else you want to share with us before we before we go? Yeah, I know, no, I know I, we could keep going. I know we could keep this thing going for <laughs> I, for several I sessions. I know. I, I but. have enjoyed it. I I have a bench, and I'll speak for Sherilyn here too. That we have been the recipient of biblical community mm. when times are hard, when times are of struggles, when times of loss. It, it, that's not the time to build community. Build community when things are good that's here. Right. That's right. And then when things are tough and hard or loss, then that community comes around you and you know you're loved. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we can do perseverance without others. Yeah. I just don't think we can. There are others are around us to help us persevere. I'm with you. And this is one of those times. Yeah. So, well, man, thank you. I yeah. appreciate your time. And uh, I thank you guys for joining us again for just another opportunity to get together, dig into God's word. And uh, again, if you don't have a place, a biblical community, if you just haven't found your place yet, I just want to encourage you. I know Scott wants to encourage you. Find that place. Yeah. You know, put yourself out there. It's worth the risk. But the fact of the matter is, it's not just worth the risk. It, it is a command of God yeah. to be in fellowship with one another, to spur each other on, to encourage one another for love and good deeds, for His glory. Mm -hmm. And so we're meant to do that. You cannot completely fulfill the Word of God without being in biblical community with one another. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Please, please seek one out.